Hey, what's up, guys? Um, as you probably have gathered, um, for most of my life, I've been very curious about the history of baseball. There's been a lot of stories and other things that I know about from the past from a variety of sources, uh, different uh, baseball history books and things that I read going all the way back to my time in elementary school. Um, having said that, there have been always a couple of uh, sort of stories and things that I've never really known much about. Now, since I've been doing the blog project and making these videos, I thought it might be interesting for me to finally take the time to really look into some of this stuff, look into some old newspapers and try to learn more about what happened. One of the big questions that I had recently was, uh, what was it like when um, the uh, uh, when John McGraw and the Baltimore Orioles went back to the American League in 1901? So if you're not aware of the story, and I think that by this time probably there are quite a few people who are not, the uh, Orioles in the 1890s were one of the best uh, baseball teams in the National League. Uh, they were a rough-and-tumble team led by guys like uh, John McGraw, um, who uh, would uh, sort of bend the rules as much as they could. There are different concepts we have in baseball today that seem natural that actually were kind of invented by them, things like uh, the hit-and-run, the idea that you're going to try to do multiple things at once to uh, give a real problem to the um, other team. There are other uh, aspects of baseball at that time, especially the mid-1890s, that no longer exist, such as you know cutting corners um, so that you can get to the next bag quick while the umpire's back is turned. For a lot of that time, there was only one umpire, you know, or other things like, you know, ramming over uh, fielders who are getting in your way in the base and um, all sorts of other problems. Um, the uh, Baltimore team ended up uh, being uh, part of a serial ownership consortium. I think they were bought by the guy who owned uh, Brooklyn, and he started to take the good players and move them over to the Brooklyn Superbas. That's why uh, Brooklyn ended up winning the National League in 1899 and also in 1900. Nobody ever talks about this, right? When people talk about, oh, the Brooklyn Dodgers, you know, they never won the World Series until 1955. It's the first time that they, you know, could celebrate. You'll notice that nobody ever mentions that, oh, yeah, they won the National League pennant in 1899 and 1900 when there was no World Series, right? There actually was a postseason series in 1900. We'll talk about that in another date. There were series like that that would happen after the season that people have largely forgotten about. Right. Baltimore, meanwhile, folded. They were one of the four teams that folded out of the National League in 1899 because of serial ownership. The most famous of which, of course, is the Cleveland Spiders. Cleveland had been also a very competitive team earlier in the decade, and uh, their team was completely stripped, and I think it was St. Louis that most of the players were um, sent out to. The Washington, D.C. team also folded, um, as did uh, the uh, team in Louisville. And uh, back when I was a kid in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, there was a lot of talk about how the Pittsburgh Pirates should move to Louisville. It was um, uh, the Pirates, uh, of course, that got the Louisville players, such as Honus Wagner, um, after the uh, Louisville team folded, again, because of serial ownership. And uh, for a while in the late 80s and early 90s, even though the Pirates were very, very good, um, the team in Louisville was outdrawing them. Um, interesting thing to uh, think about. But going back to Baltimore here... Um, I knew, and I had known because I read about this, that um, baseball had always been popular in Baltimore and that people were really upset because uh, the team had left. And so sort of the question is, well, when did they figure out that they were going to get another team? I just did a quick search through the uh, Baltimore newspapers. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of Baltimore daily newspapers from uh, 1900. It's really here on newspapers.com is really the Baltimore Sun. Now, if you're a real geek about newspapers, you'll know that if you go over to uh, the Google News Archive, which I think is still up, you can find a couple other Baltimore newspapers from this time, but you can't really search it. It's, it doesn't have that sort of text searching capability. There probably are other issues before this one, but I'd have to go through one by one to look at it. But um, there's talk here about... Um, uh, options on a good ground in Washington um, that uh, could be ex uh, could be used before January first, nineteen oh one. I don't know. I don't think that this is the site of Griffith Stadium, but I might be wrong. But here you go. If Robinson, if Robinson and McGraw play on the Baltimore team, this is Wilbur Robinson, who uh, later would manage the uh, Brooklyn uh, Robins, named after Robinson, um, in the nineteen teens, early nineteen twenties. He and McGraw were teammates and were friends. So if uh, they were uh, to play on the Baltimore team, the National League would have no chance to put a team in this city as these two men would be a winning card, right? There'd be no competition. The National League could put a team in Washington unless I had a club that played better. Our corporation would have to fight for existence there. My guess is that there were probably um, rumors before then. It was known in 1900, and it would take me a while to find all the papers again, but it was pretty well known that McGraw wanted to go back to Baltimore. John McGraw, as I've told you before, wound up in St. Louis where he wasn't happy. Uh, St. Louis Cardinals, um, or whatever you want to call them, they had a whole bunch of different nicknames back then, um, 
were set up to be sort of like a super club, like you would see in the NBA today. I mean, you had John McGraw, you had uh, Cy Young. Uh, there were a number of other players that they had uh, from other teams that they kind of assembled together. They also got Patsy Tebow, who was the old uh, Cleveland Spiders manager during their time of success, uh, to come over and manage. McGraw didn't want to show up. He ended up being an early season holdout. During that time, he was running around trying to organize another major league uh, so he could get a team back in Baltimore. Finally, he had no choice, signed a contract that deliberately had no um, reserve clause because it's the only way the St. Louis could get him, went over and was uh, probably, arguably the best player in the league, or at least one of the top three by just about any metric you look at. And by the end of the season, Patsy Tebow was out and John McGraw was effectively managing the team. So, uh, and even still, even though he had that power, he still wanted to go back to Baltimore. I've been to Baltimore. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know what he saw in the city, but that may have been a little bit different in the 1890s and 19, early 1900s. Um, anyway, the dispatch from Chicago published yesterday in the sun, which states that the next year, the American league will embrace both Baltimore and Washington did not cause much of a stir among baseball enthusiasts in Baltimore, but they may be a good deal. There may be a good deal in it. American League has good practical men, including Ben Johnson at the head of it. And what catches the eyes of the players is that it made money this season, while that former Tower of Greatness and National did an unusually poor business and is reputed to have lost money everywhere save in Pittsburgh. That's almost certainly true. Um, again, this is a hard thing to talk about like in a video and uh, give you an idea about, but um, the National League in 1900 was extremely unpopular. There was a lot of complaining going on. If you read Sporting Life, every single issue has some front page article about how you know somebody's going to replace the National League and how something absolutely needs to happen. Um, and um, it is true that the National League teams were unpopular. So we talked about this before, like with Brooklyn, with Harry Patty and stuff at that awful Washington Park that was across the street from all the factories um, in uh, New York. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, there was a problem with a whole bunch of gunk in the sky, and uh, that made it not only so that the players didn't want to play there, but also fans didn't want to go to the uh, games back then. If you look at the attendance figures for the 1900 Brooklyn Superbas, it's kind of hard to find there. I don't think baseball reference has that but if you look that up what you'll notice is that they drew very very poorly right the chicago orphans who were last place team drew poorly they drew worse than the supposed minor league chicago white stockings um, who had just started that year and who ended up winning the american league pennant right um I, I'm trying to think through the other competitive teams the only team that really got a lot of fan interest was the pittsburgh pirates and they uh, wound up finishing a somewhat distant second to uh, uh brooklyn um, nobody else wanted to go to games, and the game was largely ridiculed um, at that time. There's a reason why you don't know much about the um, uh, 1900 season, I'll tell you that. Um, Wilbur Robinson, by the way, was also on St. Louis along with John McGraw, um, and I, I kind of suspect that they went together as a package deal. It's probably the sort of thing where... Uh, you know, one wouldn't go without McGraw. I've said this before about John McGraw, but he's fascinating because he was so, such a leader of a character that even though people knew that he had his vices, like these players would just follow him around from team to team. And we'll see that later on when we start talking about um, the uh, end of the early Orioles, um, the beginning of the Yankees, and what role John McGraw played. Really, really interesting um, guy, and I don't think we've ever had a player of sense in baseball history that had that kind of charisma and that kind of um, leadership ability over others. Anyway, though, there you go. It so uh, there you have it. So that's your first um, report of uh, Baltimore um, coming up with a baseball team again, and McGraw possibly going there. You'll see right here that uh, the National League season hadn't ended yet. Um, and, uh, like why they were playing Philadelphia and Boston in, you know, mid October is a good question. You think the season ends late now, you should go back and uh, do your research. There you have it. I will talk with you um, again tomorrow. Bye-bye.